Hello boys and girls, welcome to Benchart, time for Classic, and for today what I do have in it is Chernobyl Light, a game developed by the Forum 51 and it is using Unreal Engine 4, and so my objective today is to try out this game on an Intel OHD 620 huh, and see how it goes. So 720p using low settings, I disabled chromatic aberration and motion blur because nobody likes it, and as for AMD FSR, I'm using the performance modes. So let's take a look on the results that I did have while running the benchmark tool. So using the default low preset, which defaults to 70% of resolution scaling, my performance wasn't really that bad. So average of 35, 1% low of 19. But if I do use low settings and instead of resolution scaling, I do use FSR on performance, I get a small performance boost. So 38 frames per second on average and 1% of 21. So Pick up your poison. None of them are great, especially at this resolution. Vegetation will look very pixelated and there will still be tons of moments where the game will be played at lower than 30 frames per second. But if you have these cards, I believe you are kind of adapted to play like this. So looking to the requirements, there is no specification in here uh, for the Intel GPUs. But my strict recommendation is that if you have an Intel with G620, my full recommendation it is for you to have at least 16 gigs of RAM in dual channel. Because as you can see at the start of the game, and this is a demanding moment, um, my RAM usage it is at 11 gigs of RAM. And there are some moments in game that you can expect to have around uh, 12 or even 13 gigs of RAM usage. So again, my full recommendation for you it is for you to have um, 16 gigs of RAM at least. So one of the things that I also want to point out is that um, there is some visual artifacts with this game. Yeah, that is that is artifacts in this game. All right, it, it's. It makes sense because Chernobyl White is a little bit like Stalker and you can see anomalies and artifacts and stuff like that. But I mean, really, there is uh, some issues with an Intel GPU running this game, specifically the contact shadows, which I believe they are entirely broken in this game and they don't work properly. Um, at some point on this video, I disabled them because it was making my mind very confused about how the hell this is working and it is not working properly so let's hope that uh, a patch might fix it in the future or who knows a new driver from intel that might be able to fix the contact shadows in this game so without m too much more to talk about performance all i can say is performance is bad at some points but it's not unplayable but uh, the visual graphics playing at this resolution with this amount of fsr or resolution scaling it is really bad because the only thing I see in front of me is just pixelation everywhere. And when you are in a, a more forest environment, it's really, really hard to distinguish uh, what is grass and what is an enemy, for example. So I leave it up to you in case you want to play it or not. But now that we talked about the performance, let's talk a little bit about the game. Because I believe that many people are expecting Chernobyl White to be stalker or metro exodus and unfortunately for you if you are looking for a game like that it's not really the case so let's talk a little bit about it so it is quite cliche so basically you are a physicist called Igor, and you lost your wife tatiana during the explosion of the reactor uh, of chernobyl years later the zone now is crawled with uh, agents and bandits uh, just like the stalker you can call them stalkers if you want all right, it's full of them, and uh, you think that your wife uh, it is on the power plant, and you want to go there, but obviously you just can't go inside a power plant since it's uh, fully defended, and you just can't take there with you many other guys to help you based on things that you hear in your head. So basically, uh, during the the gameplay of this game, you need to find proofs that she's really there in order to convince people to go there and rescue her, all right? Well, that's the story. Although, yeah, this is one of the guys that will help you. It is the Olivier, and that's it. You will find other teammates during the playthrough, and each one have their own set of skills, and you can evolve them, not uh, Skyrim style where you play 
uh, gold for it. No, that's not like it. You need to train them and you need to feed them and you need to have the best conditions as possible to them in order for them to evolve. So this is where the game starts to be kind of different from when you start to notice that the game it is no stalker because you get to this warehouse which will be your hub for everything and you need to build it fallout 4 style so every time you go to the zone you collect uh, um I'm, i was about to say ingredients but no the, you're going to collect equipments and stuff and uh, scope stuff that uh, allows you to build stuff into the warehouse to improve for example air filters to have tvs uh, to have stuff so that your teammates are fine with the app uh, that they have and they feel more comfortable and glad to help you out in your journey well that's pretty much about it so basically what is chernobylite chernobylite it is a story driven game not entirely driven though but uh, I think the story is the best thing about this game, despite it is super cliche. The way that it unfolds, it is special, and I will talk about that later. But above all, this game, you will manage your team, because you need to feed them, you need to, them to have the best conditions as possible, you need to manage your warehouse, and every day you need to go to the zone to collect ingredients or with a specific objective. So basically the gameplay loop, it is exactly like this. You are in your warehouse with two teammates, for example, and that is, it is a start of a new day and you can select, for example, five to six areas of the zone where you want to start. Each area, it is a little bit like a small chunk of stalker map. And um, when you start the day, each uh, chunk of the map have its own objectives. And you can say, for example, Olivier, you go to this uh, zone and uh, do this objective. Uh, other guy go to the other zone and do such objective. And you, you can select the area of the zone and do specific object objective. Because uh, it might be food, it might be materials, it might be ammo, it might be anything. So you do that specific objective that is always uh, secondary stuff for you to do too. And you finish what you are going to do there, you finish your main objective and you open a portal and you get back to the main hub, I mean the, the warehouse. So you feed your colleagues, your colleagues give you uh, what they collect with the mission, you get what you collect with the mission, you evolve your comrades, you evolve your warehouse and you go to bed, you start a new day and the objectives change as well as the places of the zone. But basically, it is exactly like that. You start on the warehouse, you select where you want to go, you, the game loads that area, which is usually a chunk of the map, you complete that objective, you go back to the warehouse, you evolve with the things that you collect, go back to sleep, rinse and repeat. So the game gets really repetitive because uh, the objectives, they are not very di diverse, you know? And this is one of the biggest flaws that I have with this game is that it it really gets repetitive. The enemies are very easy to kill. I played with the medium difficulty, probably with the maximum difficulty. It does change, but it is super easy. The enemies, this part, they are uh, very well armed. Uh, they are a little bit dumb and they don't eat as... They don't have too much accuracy. As well as they have laser sights, so you can clearly see where they are pointing at. Makes the things even more easier. You know, the monsters are really very generic, there is some jump scares here and there, and every time you go to the zone, you can find traders, you can find evidences that Tatiana is at specific place or something, some evidence that will help you out with the objective, and it is just, the game it is just about that. Now, talking about the story, I say that the story is special, because this game, and this is the selling point in my opinion for this game. All right. This game has tons of very important decisions. And this is decisions that will affect you throughout the game as well as the ending. It's not like Life is Strange where you get to the, to the, to the end of the game. You have two different choices depending... Uh, I mean, you have the two different choices to choose from. And whatever you've done in the past, it doesn't affect the ending. No, Chernobyl White, all the decisions you take they will have consequences and they don't even display a warning there saying that your decision will have consequences in the future no sometimes you are making a decision 
a very important one without even you knowing that and this is awesome all right and giving the supernatural thing and the paranormal activity that is going uh, in this just like stalker the chernobylite which is a compound the green compound that you pick up that enables you to create portals and go back in time allows you sometimes to go back in time and change um, some answers and some decisions that you took that you at some point you thought that they were the best for you and for the world and then after a while you discover that ah shit probably it wasn't that probably I should take another decision you can go back in time at some point pay up with Chernobylites go back in time and change the story and it is really well done and I think the farm 51 really nailed it so when it comes to managing your own team, managing your warehouse and the way that the story unfolds and change based on your decisions and the decisions are really important, it really changes a lot. This is really the selling points of the game. When it comes to gameplay and uh, gameplay, I mean exploring and stuff like that, I think these are the weakest parts, all right? So this game, it is completely the opposite of Stalker. All right, this game nails the story that uh, it brings. Despite it is super cliche at the beginning, uh, it really starts to unfold in a very decent one. Uh, the story, the decisions, the managing that you have in here, this is what makes this game great. Not the gameplay, not the exploring and the RPG stuff. The RPG stuff, it is really, eh, it's generic. Everything it is super generic, but when it comes to the rest, I think this game really nails it so if you were hoping this game to be a stalker or a metro exodus or any kind of that stuff you will be super disappointed because this is not where the game it is good at it i think at, at some point the farm 51 might wanted to do kind of a stalker or a metro exodus but they thought that they didn't add the resources and they thought that it wasn't really interested or it was just one more game like that and they decide to create this which is despite it is not you know it is it doesn't nail all the things in the world inside the game but it nails many stuff in this game there is some interesting concepts in here most of them are not really new but apply it to the zone and the way that it is done it is really great all right so it's not a perfect game by any means i was expecting better gameplay uh, I was expecting the game to be much less repetitive. I would love these guys to release updates and uh, to add more diversity to the objectives that you do daily so that the game couldn't be as much repetitive. Uh, if they do that, it would be awesome. But uh, if they could solve that, if they could solve the artificial intelligence and every kind of that stuff, I'm assuming that the median difficulty, they are decent. Uh, I'm expecting that if I get the difficulty higher probably it is more complicated to play or probably it is more challenging i don't know i really hope so but for now i wasn't really impressed with the median difficulty now that i'm seeing this let me add since you are a physicist you are not kind of a soldier or a super stalker that you kill everyone every time you kill like uh, a guy or something uh, your mental state can drop a little bit so the lower it gets uh, they say that you can see visions and stuff like that your screen starts to go black all around uh, because you are going to get crazy a little bit uh, also your colleagues you need to manage that too for them because they can also get uh, sanity levels very reduced and so you need to take care of that because if you send them to missions where they will kill um, eventually their sanity levels will decrease too so that's something that you need to manage to to your teammates all right so i think that's all that i want to talk about chernobylite hope you keep enjoying the rest of the gameplay and i do hope to see you soon goodbye <laughs>
есть, она заладыть, твою мать.